when you preach, you preach to unbelievers with the confidence that Jesus is inviting them. But when Jesus invites, he's not just inviting to send them to heaven when they die. That's the decisionistic evangelism. He is inviting them to acknowledge him in faith as Lord and Savior. Not just Savior, but Lord and Savior. From Joey and Lipa, uh, regarding the title of Son of Man prior to Daniel, is there any reference where the title was ever used? Like Psalm 144.3, well, in some of the uses, usage of this, it's simply about humanity, like the sons of men uh, in their frailty. But uh, the title Son of Man is used for Ezekiel as Yahweh is addressed to him several times. You read Son of Man. Uh, for example, in the Ezekiel 37, Valley of Dry Bones vision, Son of Man, shall these bones live? So it's a title for Ezekiel, but when used in the generic, like sons of men, uh, it's just referring to humanity. But the messianic, the messian, messianically significant title, son of man, are those that come from the servant songs of Isaiah, not the title, but the uh, mission of suffering and ransom. And then the title itself is from Daniel 7, uh, from Raymond. Uh, of Kalamba. I understand she thought that this title is traceable from Daniel 7 as not a mere human title, but as a messianic title. Question, what does Jesus mean when he says in Matthew 24, no one knows about that they or are, nor even the son of the nor even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father, as it was in the days of Noah, etc. Some challenge that Jesus is not God, referring to this verse. So to answer that, some say that he spoke as a human. The reason why he does not know the day and the hour, kind of, kindly shed light. <clears throat> we will study this when we come to the uh, humiliation of Jesus. When he humbled himself, he really humbled himself, which means... He restrained his divine powers. Everything he did, according to Acts, he did by the power of the Holy Spirit. That is why even his miracles, you do not use them as proof of his deity. It's a false approach. Uh, even his miracles were done by the power of the Holy Spirit, not by his own divine powers, because his divine powers were restrained. And that included his uh, omniscience. When he says the son does not know, at that point he does not know because he was in the state of humiliation. So there were things that he just cast upon the father uh, because he was in the state of humiliation. But even here, you will note the significance of the order because the order shows first no one, no man. Then not even the angels, and then not even the Son of Man, which shows that Son of Man is a title that is above angels. Now, that cannot be of mere human creature. So he was the Messiah. It's a messianic title above angels, but uh, because he is in the state of humiliation, that included his restraint and concealment of his divine prerogatives. Uh, but we'll study that more when we come to the state of humiliation and incarnation of Jesus. Jones from CLC. Uh, how can we know if our term papers are containing heresies or things to reconsider? Will we receive any correction or clarification? Well, let me be the judge of that. If uh, uh, your term paper contains anything heretical, uh, you'll get a message from me. Uh, but uh, I think most of the term papers are just research. Uh, I don't see how you can have anything heretical, let's say a Pontius Pilate, or unless when you do a research on Nestorius and Nestorianism and you recommend him, uh, you'll get a message from me. Uh, but these are safe subjects, so to speak.
Keanu uh, from Bacolod. Is Christ's father-son relationship to God the Father eternal or did it have a beginning? I'm talking about their designation as father and son, not their existence as persons of the Trinity. Well, I'll just uh, make that point after the break that uh, he has always been the son. But after the break, we'll have something about that. Other questions? Let's take a break. 